Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard the Pilot Lawyer Podcast. Thank you for your attention while this important legal information is reviewed. What you hear should not replace consultation with an attorney and should not be considered advice for your situation. On behalf of the Pilot Lawyer and your entire crew, it's our pleasure to have you aboard. Welcome, aviators, to the Pilot Lawyer Podcast with us, the Eisen Brothers at the Eisen Law Firm where aviation law is all we do, nothing else. You're here for what we do best, navigating the FAA medical certification process for pilots and those who want to become pilots. And of course, as we say around the office, if you don't laugh, you cry. And for the next 30 minutes, we hope to bring you the lighter side of what can otherwise be a frustrating process. We're sure you'll cry when you hear Christopher talk. So whether you are laughing at us or with us, Join us, brothers, as we discuss the fascinating world of FAA medical certification. This is Anthony Eisen, and that's all we have for you today. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Christopher. You're here still? When you say aviation law is all we do, nothing else. Define that. What are you actually talking about? We don't do divorces. We don't do personal injury. We don't do any number of other legal matters. All we handle is aviation Related matters. Now, now oh, let's get a little a bit further there. here. That's son. very broad. We also do nothing other than medical certification issues. We also do a little bit of enforcement action defense. Sure. If, well, if yeah. Appropriate. Yes. If kind of dealing with falsification Primarily issues with a medical certificate. Primarily derivative of medical certification issues. So when we say aviation law is all we do, it's actually even more specific than that. If you wanted to get more specific, sir... It could be airman medical certification law is all we do, nothing else. Now that we've got that out of the way, if I want to sell my airplane, I need a purchase agreement drafted. Do I call you? No. Call somebody else. Don't call me late to dinner. You don't call me for that either. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this much, Joe. Why are you always so goofy and dorky on this podcast? I don't know. I was listening to us the other day and I thought, man, we probably should tone it down a bit. Now I feel like we've toned it down too much. Shoot. Today in the Eisen Law Firm podcast. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, you like that? Well, anyhow, uh, what are you talking about today? And, but you never should... did answer the question why you're Well, so you're goofy. putting me to sleep over here. Well, why are you so goofy? I don't know. I just am who I am. I is what I is. You are goofy. Well, That's the answer there. Well, I'm bozo. Listen, this is bore me <laughs> to sleep. I'm about to fall asleep listening to this. I see what you're trying to do. Listeners, we're planning to talk about obstructive sleep apnea and your airman medical certification. <laughs> Can I Christopher <laughs> over here is being uh, obtuse, putting himself to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, what is the deal with the sleep apnea? Seems like they're just crazy about the sleep apnea up there at the Federals. Oh, well, I'll tell you this much. If you have a history of obstructive sleep apnea, OSA, then you need to put it down on your medical application or certificate. What? There's no to question. You, you crazy. It's just oh, crazy. Yeah, you know Where what? is it on the medical? I've never seen a, a question There's that a asks specific about. specific question that asks a very broad <laughs> question. <laughs> and that is question 18X. Have you ever in your life had? I bet you can't recite it. Yeah, no, 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 I, I, can't, I, can't, okay. I bet you can't. Have you ever in your life been present? Oh, oh, come, come on. Do do we, do you don't mess me up. Have, me you ever, spot. have you ever in your life had, presently have, or been diagnosed with and then 18X, other illness, disability, or surgery. <clears throat> How you've had an illness, disability, or surgery. That, that, those are you trying to, to tell to me that obstructive linear. sleep apnea and central sleep apnea are covered on 18X? Is it an illness? Let's go to the medical professional oh, so wouldn't, wouldn't, um Wouldn't central be under neurological conditions? Okay. One look at you and you would be under neurological conditions. <laughs> Let's Am not I talk right? to the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. It's complicated. <laughs> it's it's complicated. It's no, just put it under 18 necks probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we recommend that it be placed. Just forget we say anything about Central. Uh, that's not what this podcast is Who, who even mentioned Central? He did. seen it before. We're not even in that time zone. They have a guideline for it. Well, we'll talk about that on another podcast. That'll be a fascinating <laughs> podcast. And a quick one, too. <laughs> Central. The end. Anyhow, so obstructive sleep apnea should be placed on the application, whether you've previously had it and don't have it anymore, or you do have it and you're being treated for it, or you do have it and you're not being treated for it. If at any point in your life, ever, looking back at the, your entire life, if ever had sleep apnea, 
you always need to put it down at 18x on the 8500 application. Let me ask you this question. What if I'd never been diagnosed with it? But you know my AME, Aviation Medical Examiner. I do know. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) If your AME, I don't know who you know. Know yourself. The AME is required to assess whether or not you may be at risk for obstructive sleep apnea at the time of exam, even if you don't have a diagnosis for it or never even heard of it. Can you believe that? Now, one look at you would suggest that maybe you have it. You don't need to guess. Just looking at me, you know. I just said that. Literally. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you're saying it. <laughs> I'm confirming it. Anyhow, what do you yeah, do? Your AME is supposed to check for during the flight physical. That's right. So your AME has a, a slew or a menu of options that he or she can select on the 8500-8 medical application and identify for the FA your level of risk for obstructive sleep apnea. Not to get too tangential and in the weeds. I don't know what tangential is. I don't don't even know if you're pretty. That's a fruit, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) So I've seen cases, though, where... You've seen some cases? I've seen a thing or two. I'm with farmers. Where the AME didn't notate that the person or the, the airman applicant had sleep apnea or or was at risk for sleep apnea the airman didn't put it down and then the fa said well he should have put it down because he should have known or he knew that he had it blah 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 and they don't really give any weight to what the the ame should have done during the flight physical they just kind of blow that off as though that question doesn't even exist but yet they're going to hold you essentially accountable unless they find a problem i think it's probably best that if you again you got to go back to the the wellspring to the question have you ever in your life had, presently have, or been diagnosed with? And then, you know, what are you doing to, to inform yourself as to your knowledge of this history? You know, so I think to that extent, knowing what your history holds is, is the key here. And if you've been diagnosed with it, then certainly you need to put it down. And if there's not been a diagnosis, then, you know, what is the other totality of circumstances in your history that you know of that may or may not Require you to put that down. I might have a relevant question. I'm rambling over here. I got a relevant question. Anthony's looking off in space. I'm just, I'm vamping. What is your question? So how do they evaluate for that in office? I mean, doesn't that usually require a sleep study to say that you have it? You mentioned that, you know, not all the time. They, what is it? (laughs) (laughs) The FAA has provided guidance to aviation medical examiners as to the types of things that they should look for in assessing whether or not an airman potentially has uh, sleep apnea or is at risk for sleep apnea on exam. So what are some of the things that the AME is required to look at or is urged to look at? Well, that's a good question. Let me go ahead and tell you. So the AME will screen for OSA or obstructive sleep apnea using what they call an integrated assessment of history, symptoms, and physical or clinical findings. But that's only going to be done at the time of the exam when you go in for the, for the AME exam. But essentially, if, for example, the FA were to look at Christopher and say, listen, you've got... You're, ain't, you're, ain't no doubt in my mind, you, boy. You, you, you got, boy, <laughs> you've got sleep apnea. Then the AME can still issue the certificate. But what's going to happen is... The FAA is going to send you a letter and then give you 90 days to get everything figured out. Do you have it or not? Well, how are you going to find out if you have it? Before we get into all that, though, I guess what I was getting at previously, probably inarticulately, and I will probably still be inarticulate as I try to articulate it, is that you shouldn't rely, though, on the AME during the examination to pick up on this obstructive sleep apnea. That's my point. Because if the FAA finds out that you had it, or that you didn't report it, they're not going to really say, oh, well, you know, you saw an AME and the AME didn't pick it up on it either, so we're not going to do anything here for you, right? I mean, this is something that they've revoked certificates over, right, for falsification? Yes. And so certainly you don't want to play with fire. If you know you have it or if you've been diagnosed with it, you certainly need to put it down at 18X that you have a history of it. And then from there go through the appropriate process with establishing your eligibility, which may be through having an updated sleep study or showing that you're actively currently treating the symptoms, right? That's correct. Now, if you have documented obstructive sleep apnea, 
and it's not being treated, the FAA is not going to give you a medical a day in your life, boy. So you're saying it's a disqualifying condition? It is, but it's not specifically disqualifying. But what does that mean? So the regulations specifically identify conditions which are disqualifying, but there are other conditions which are a part of a catch-all, which at the federal air surgeon's discretion would prevent issuance of a medical certificate. So it's a catch-all question or a catch-all condition. That's right. Catch them all. Pokemon. <sighs> you, I'm sorry. You, you look like what? a person to be interested in Pokemon. <laughs> it looks like a Charizard. <laughs> no, I, I don't even know, what, even that know what that is. I, I, think, I just know the song, that, man. I don't know. We're probably losing our audience here. Yeah, go Pokemon, ahead. these nerds. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that you think we have an audience. I've seen the metrics. Pretty poor. Mom and dad are, are very Listen, over and over and over, <laughs> over and over. That's how, you know how, that's how he knows we're losing. The you know, what's audience. interesting is the other day we were listening to this podcast with our mother and father and you know, <laughs> I was sitting there and I mean, first of all, it's kind of sad that we're sitting there listening to the podcast back with, our, with our parents. Yeah, we were but, driving in traffic. I mean, we yeah, had yeah, no, yeah. you know, it's so, anyhow, so bumper bumper. our mom, I'm sitting there right in front of her. Oh, Christopher, you have a wonderful radio voice. <laughs> Yeah. No compliments towards me or the humor I feel like I may bring to this uh, conversation. I mean, or knowledge, <laughs> the <sure>. content. <laughs> what are you getting at? I'm just trying to say, you know, where's my compliment? Hey, she's got to lift them up in any way if she can. If you I mean, find it- my voice soothing or relaxing, uh, text Christopher at 863 712 9475 and vote for your favorite brother. Whatever. <laughs> Sleep bad. Let's get back to the content, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're boring me to death. Now that's a whole different <laughs> issue. <laughs> death. <laughs> Can you get yeah, a medical yeah. situation? <laughs> <with death? laughs> that's an interesting thought. What if you had somebody that technically died and then was resuscitated? Yeah, what caused? Yeah, death? what's well? Sleep what, apnea. What question? What question is that on on the eighty five hundred? Other just too far. Anyhow, so getting back to it. Uh, let's talk about having sleep apnea and, and what you would have to show the FAA. Let's say you have sleep apnea. Let's say there's no doubt about it. The sleep studies clearly show that you have active sleep apnea. Where do you go from there if you want to hold a medical certificate with the FAA? Anthony. The FAA is going to want to establish that the obstructive sleep apnea is being adequately treated. Now, how can you do that? The FAA will accept treatment with a CPAP or a BiPAP device or a dental device. So let's go down the route of a CPAP or BiPAP. If you're treating the sleep apnea with such a device, the FAA is going to want to see metrics of how much you're using the CPAP. They're going to want to see the data from the machine to establish that you're using on average a 75% use per night or six hours on average at a minimum. They're going to, going to want to see, in theory, we can make two weeks of, of data work to establish that you're using the the device and it's effectively treated. Is that a sleep theory? Apnea. That's my theory. Based on what? Yeah. Well, if you go back to Pythagorean, that guy didn't get into medical. But, <laughs> but seriously, though, based on what? Based I off mean, of the FA case experience, case experience, policy, data, hard-driven data. Okay. All right. So Moving that on. being said, you'll then need to have a worksheet filled out by your physician, identifying how much you're using the CPAP or the BiPAP, how much. How many sort of your usage? Did I already say that? And you also need to see, uh, have a, you know, documentation from the doctor on this worksheet that it's effectively treating the sleep apnea. You could also use a dental device. Now, our recommendation to most airmen is if they can use a dental device, that's all the better. Because typically, there are dental devices that track usage. But most dental devices, in our experience, don't track usage so it's... I feel like you just learned this week that there's some dental yeah, devices that yeah. track usage. <laughs> but I will say this much. The dental device not tracking usage is somewhat less cumbersome to the extent that you don't have to be constantly printing data every year for the FAA to establish your usage. That's based on an affidavit, right? That's correct. The airman would sign an affidavit saying you're consistently using this to treat your... That's treat correct. Pattern. And your doctor would still say it's effectively treating and so on through the worksheet. And then also, if you're an airline pilot or someone who travels a lot with the CPAP device, it's just less cumbersome to have to travel with. Has your FAA medical certificate been denied? 
Are you concerned you may not be able to get a medical certificate from the FAA? Are you at risk for FAA action for failing to report your medical history appropriately? Call the pilot lawyer at 1-855-FAA-1215 to discuss your options for getting the FAA to issue your medical certificate and get you flying. We are happy to evaluate your case and discuss with you a plan for presenting your case to the AME or the FAA. Aviation law is all we do, nothing else. All right, so you got all the data together or the necessary documentation. Is that something that you can do before you go in to see your AME or is that something you can just do after the fact? Where, at what point in the process did you start working on this? I would start working on it uh, in your sleep <laughs> as soon as possible. It's the one thing you can work on in your sleep, huh? <laughs> the idea is... Don't even sit on that one. I didn't think it was that funny and it came out just right then and there. Yeah. Like a burp after lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. Anyhow. When should you start working on it? As soon as possible. And, it, and I think we kind of touched on this already, but we'll see sleep apnea as a major issue for veterans receiving VA disability benefits. And they maybe have received a benefit for, for obstructive sleep apnea. And then this is a common issue where maybe they had this 10 years ago. Now all of a sudden they have to report their benefits to the FAA or they should have been all along, but it becomes an issue where, okay, well, I've got this diagnosis from 10 years ago. Now what am I going to do? Well, the FAA is not going to be satisfied until such time that they either see that either one, you don't have sleep apnea now, which maybe you've lost weight or maybe you've had a jaw surgery or something that would now result in you no longer having sleep apnea. So they're going to want to see a sleep study to reveal that, okay, I no longer have this. Or they're going to want to see you using either a CPAP, a BiPAP, dental device, and so on. So to your question, how soon should I start? Well, as soon as you realize sleep apnea is going to be a problem, you need to do one of those two things, either prove you don't have it, or two, yeah, I'm using this device to establish that it's being effectively treated. And so you should start as soon as possible gathering the data because they're going to want to see the data. And then working with your doctor to get the worksheet filled out or a narrative letter, and then completing the necessary documentation as far as the, um, the compliance affidavit. I know we've dealt with a lot of cases, and you can we insert have? your little roast there. There, there it is. <laughs> I see. I know it's coming. Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I've seen a lot of cases where people will call us, and they didn't realize that they needed to put down the history of sleep apnea. They recognize they have it. They just, for whatever reason, didn't think it was a necessary to tell the FAA because one, the questions don't specifically ask, you know, do you have a history of sleep apnea? So it doesn't really, you know, jog their memory when they're filling out the application or maybe they, they know about it, but they're afraid of the implications it'll have on their ability to hold a medical certificate. And so they've been reluctant and hesitant to put it down. Maybe not knowing that is something that could easily, you know, get a special issuance for if it's being treated. So in those situations, where there needs to be something told to the FAA, should they do it on the next application, just get right with them on the next application, or should they do an amendment that rectify the previous applications and then move forward with the next application, the future application, and continue to put it down consistently? Let me ask you this. Answer a question with a question. Does filling out your next medical application correctly do anything to fix the old ones? I think that's the misconception or the question. Too. That's the concern here, Sonny, that it's not going to do anything to fix the old applications if you're accurate on the current application. So what we like to recommend and I think is an appropriate step and it's helpful to the airmen, helpful to the FAA, which is to go and do an amendment or request that the FAA amend your previous applications through a statement to reflect your history of obstructive sleep apnea and treatment with CPAP or whatever it may be. And it's been our experience that in doing so, the FA tends to say, okay, thanks for letting us know, but now we need to know whether or not you're eligible to hold your medical in light of this history. All right, so do an amendment. If you haven't previously reported it, but know that you have it and you need to tell the FA about it. And then from there, work on establishing your eligibility. And so that way on all future applications, it's been reported. But wait a second. I only have mild obstructive sleep apnea. I don't have anything that's severe. I don't even know what sleep apnea is. Okay. It's time for the our medical coffee corner consultant. with Alex. Hello, everybody. 
<laughs> Behind the bush with Alex. <laughs> that does that sounds, sound right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anywho, so medical consultant, what is sleep apnea? Obst- for those for those that have it and don't know what it is, obstructive sleep apnea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is when the muscles of the soft palate, so kind of the back of the throat, right, become weakened and can no longer support those structures. Do you know anything about supporting structures, Chris Reed? Certainly don't know anything about soft palates. You can't support a family. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. You got a nice family. Lovely family and a beautiful home. So those structures are no longer supported, allowing for the airway to collapse or become occluded. And then a lot of times we see with weight gain, you know, that kind of puts more pressure on that soft palate. And My poor soft palate the- is probably about to collapse. <laughs> it's just screaming. <laughs> it's and- collapsed long ago. <laughs> <laughs> just like this conversation. Anyways, <laughs> um, so that occlusion of the airway, especially when laying down, becomes more prevalent, causing issues while sleeping. What would you recommend? Losing weight to begin with. <laughs> I'm looking directly at Anthony right in the eyeballs. <laughs> I know we had a trial last year where we sleep did? apnea. Okay, every time. Every time. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's like you it's, know it's getting coming, old. Man. It's getting old. <laughs> Anyhow, we had a trial. Just like you. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody text Christopher. Every- 863 712 9475. You don't even have to text if me you- about anything in particular. Just yeah. text me. Just text him. <laughs> But if you want to talk about Anthony's zany antics and his comebacks, drop him a line. Anyhow, at a trial last year we had where sleep apnea was at one of the discussed topics, the FAA expert physician with the FAA came in and discussed why the FAA has concern for sleep apnea, why they consider it to be a disqualifying condition. That's an interesting story. Yeah, but let's not get too far into it. Other than to say, why is it that the FAA has concern for sleep apnea being a disqualifying condition? To be honest with you, it's a little unclear, <laughs> Except, even still with that trial testimony. But there was an anecdote provided with respect to a flight, I believe it was in the Hawaiian Islands, where the crew, I guess they all fell asleep. <laughs> I, guess they, <laughs> I guess they all had sleep. <laughs> they both, yeah. they yeah. both had sleep. And they kicked in at the same yeah, time. Yeah. They both the same. Their uh, conversation was more asleep. boring than this one. They got to sleep. <laughs> I'll go to sleep too. <laughs> and then they overflew the island they were supposed to fly to. And I don't know if they got didn't critical sound like, on gas. I, it doesn't sound like it was like any major problem other than, oh, we're going to have to turn around now. <laughs> yeah. oh, they woke yeah. up refreshed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can do this. <laughs> Went land. I can land easy now. Yeah. I'm yeah. feeling better. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I could certainly see where that would be something that, that would require some oversight, you know, to make sure that airmen aren't falling asleep at the controls of an aircraft while in flight. There are probably I mean, other comorbidities that we could discuss as well. Like when you see someone with AFib, the FAA is hot to trot to make sure you don't have obstructive sleep apnea because of the correlation there potentially being a comorbidity. And so typically with uh, any electrophysiological concerns, we'll see them wanting to rule out sleep apnea. So if they have sleep apnea, they might also have other things that the FAA would want to know about, right? Maybe. Well. I mean, or is vice, it, is versa. It vice versa. It's not necessarily, oh, you have sleep apnea, so you probably have diabetes. It's more so, oh, you have cardiovascular degree. Oh, you maybe you have uh, sleep apnea. Oh, you're a husky? Is it also maybe sleep an apnea. opportunity for the FAA to have a records grab? Get record, medical oh records, God. go through he's the records. Finally, he's finally come up with a Go topic. through them and see what else is in those he's records. He's going for it. He's going. Do it. And, and then, what else? And then yeah, compare them against line. your past <laughs> applications. Be quiet over there Whoa. while I talk. But anyhow, so you get the idea. They see that you have obstructive sleep apnea. They ask for your treatment records. You send them the treatment records. They then go through them with a fine tooth comb. They see, oh, look, he's also been diagnosed with anxiety, depression, uh, you know, some other type of issue, headaches. Uh, they, he, he's had loss of consciousness or who knows what other AFib, other type of medical issues. And then they start comparing those against your prior applications and they realize, oh, wait, he didn't put these down on there. And now you've essentially proven a case of falsification to the FAA by providing them with your records that they can now take and show that you falsified your past applications on these other issues, right? That's right. So you got to be careful what doors are going to be opened 
by nature of sleep apnea or anything else. And so from there, you know, before you just fire off a response to the FAA with the records that they requested, it might behoove you to get your airman medical file, see what your past applications have said, get your treatment records related to the condition that the FAA is inquiring about, do a comparison, make sure everything is right and tight, I's are dotted, T's are crossed. And then that way, if you do find that there is an incorrect statement previously, that you can maybe amend it before it gets too far out of line and uh, down the road before the FAA finds out, right? That's correct. All in all, I mean, the idea is transparency. You want to try and make sure that you're being as forthcoming as possible in relation to the questions that are being asked, knowing that, especially with a sleep apnea, there is a pathway forward, even if you do have it. It's probably like one of the easier conditions that you can get medical certification with, even though they consider it disqualifying. Wouldn't you agree? I would definitely agree with that, baby. Do you have anything else that you want to add to this conversation or do you think we've pretty much scratched the itch? I think we flogged this one pretty well. Okay. You know what? One other thing, I've seen people with these tongue pacemakers get a medical as well. Tongue pacemaker? And that's it for the rest of the show. Yeah, so that's also a... Treatment? A, a form of treatment. It's not very common, but they get these... Do you have any tongue. idea what a tongue pacemaker is? Oh, that's a new one for me. Huh, interesting. That's weird. Well, maybe... Did you see that? No, we've seen that. You have. I've seen it. I mean, I'm not, I don't even... I don't even I know, know what you're doing in there most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, is there something you need to read to close this thing out, or are we just going to say goodbye? We're going to do this podcast a little differently. We're just going to turn it off, and you'll <laughs> stop hearing our voice in three, two. <laughs> so, um... I think the, the final approach thought. Yeah, give me that. The final thoughts on approach. What is it we call it? Whatever it is. Well, it says right here. Any final thoughts here on how we can you know, get our clients a medical certificate with obstructive sleep apnea? Oh, I thought you would never ask. Yes. I nearly never did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think long story short, if you have sleep apnea, you need to report it at 18X. If you have it, it's not the end of the world. You can treat it, show you're treating it, mitigating against symptoms, get a special issuance, maybe show them that you don't have it, even though you had it previously. And uh, maybe not have to go through that special issuance process. And then it doesn't matter if you have mild, moderate, or severe. The FA is going to treat it the same. It is what it is. Well, I think that's pretty well flogged our next topic here. I, I want to go ahead and tease that a little bit. Our next topic has not been decided yet, so tune in the next time. TBD. <laughs> All of that to be said, you have logged another uneventful, perhaps boring half hour listening to the Pilot Lawyer Podcast. Don't fall asleep and overfly that island listening to the Pilot Lawyer Podcast. Nevertheless, even though our wives deny they know us in public and sometimes even in private. You know they do. We are the Eisen Brothers of the Eisen Law Firm, and we will see you next time, God willing. Let's, whatever, goodbye. This is the podcastfactory.com.